Assalamu alaikum, I'm Fatima Khurram and I'm one of the tutors at Waleen. I am pursuing MBBS from a government medical college in Pakistan. I have been a high achiever since my primary years and even today, alhamdulillah, I'm a distinction holder at my medical college. Um, I am offering four different subjects at Waleen. I'm, I'll be offering O-Levels English, O-Levels Biology, O-Levels Islam Math and O-Levels Pakistan Studies. I have a good teaching experience um, for the past two years that is going to help me, inshallah. And the good point is that all my students uh, have been high achievers too, and they just recently got their A stars as well in their O levels exams. Okay, and I'm also into content writing. Currently, um, I'm doing content writing as well, and I'm a part of several societies, and some of my research projects are also underway. Okay. So here are some of the course objectives of the subjects that I'm offering at Waleen. O-Levels English Language uh, basically aims to develop some good communicative competence, creativity, critical skills, and cross-cultural awareness among the students. So you're not just supposed to write and read, but the examiners expect that you showcase some of your creativity skills, your critical skills in your exams. And inshallah, when you will be studying from me, I'll make sure that all of these skills are inculcated in you and your writings actually, you know, your writings do showcase them. Okay, next, O-Levels uh, Biology. The aim is to, is to make the students understand the biological world in which they live and to have, and so that the students may have a very pragmatic approach towards the subject, right? So next is O-Levels Islamiyat. The course objective of O-Levels Islamiyat is to develop an understanding of the importance of the major beliefs of Islam among the students. And the good thing is that one thing that when I was a student, I learned greatly from my O-Levels Islamiyat subject was that I, you know, just got a very practical and a, and a pragmatic approach to the religion. Something that I think that was lacking in my faith. So I think studying O-Levels Islamiyat really did help me and inshallah it's going to help you out too. Next is O-Levels Pakistan Studies. As you all know that there are two main uh, subdivisions. Oh, one is BS1 in which uh, we are going to study about the history of Pakistan and you know in our syllabus we are going to study about the history which is still 1999 and then PS2 is going to deal with the geography, the environment, the topography of Pakistan. Okay so why do you need to study from me? What makes me different from other teachers? I think what makes me different is my teaching strategy. Uh, my teaching strategy is very very student oriented and I target exams right i need i just make sure that whatever i teach is very very high yield and is very very important for my students to know and it is something that is going to help my students score an a star in the exams right so i make sure that my sessions are very very interactive i try to give them very i try to give them practical examples in my lectures so that you know they are able to retain things for a very long time and the one thing uh, and one thing i'm a student myself right so one thing i've noticed is that you know teachers do not share any interesting learning aids with the students so um that is something that i'll be addressing in my lectures and i'll be sharing very interesting learning aids with you be it in the form of mnemonics or i'll be sharing some visual aids with you that are actually going to help you a lot in retaining things for a very long time. So precisely, I'm going to make learning very, very easy for you along with memorization. And uh, my class in class environment is going to be very spirited and very friendly. I'm going to be open to all sorts of your, all sort of your queries. Doesn't matter if you think that your query is stupid or not. I'll be addressing every sort of query because my, because you are the star of my, my student is the star of my class. Okay, so, uh, you know, before actually uh, starting, te starting teaching a student and make sure to figure out that what kind of learner my student is. Um, this particularly helps me out in understanding the learning style of my students so that, you know, I design my lectures around it, right? So there are around eight different learning styles 
some students uh, understand things better by listening some students understand things by you know pictures some students understand things by using sounds some students understand things by writing and some students are a combination of it whereas some students they like to study alone this is how they make uh, this is how they learn better whereas some students they require logic for everything so before actually taking your course i'll make sure and I'll, I'll try to understand that what kind of learner are you so that I design my course and I design my learning strategy, my teaching strategy based on you. Okay, so uh, I'll be giving you a quick demonstration, a quick um, session on formal letter so that, uh, so that you have a good understanding of it. And as you all know that formal letter is one of the mandatory tasks that act, that comes in the paper in paper one of uh, as you all know that paper one of english language is primarily concerned with writing right and the section one is of directed writing which is a mandatory task and they can give you anything to write right so the objectives of today's lecture is that by the end of the lecture you must have gained an understanding of directed writing uh, we'll be discussing different types of letters we'll also learn about the structure of a formal letter and then we're going to look at an exam style letter question and finally we're going to uh, have a look into the examiner report and marking scheme okay so what actually is directed writing so directed writing is a piece of writing it's a composition of some length that is written to order, to inform, to complain or persuade, right? So basically in your directed writing tasks, they demand you to follow the instructions. You are actually given a, given a task with detailed instructions and uh, they ask you to write a particular form of writing and they then they add the examiner demands that in your writing you have a you have actually taken the right approach you have taken the right tone you have written as per the right audience okay so these are some of the directed writing tasks that are likely to appear in your uh, paper one section one um you can be asked to write a formal letter you can be asked to write an informal letter a report a speech a account a magazine a news article so these are all the tasks that are likely to appear in a paper. One of them is likely to appear in a paper and you must know about all of them. Okay, so before actually understanding what is a formal letter, let us understand what is directed writing. Uh, directed writing with respect to our all of English exam. So it's a task in which you are supposed to write about 200 to 300 words. It's very important that you do not exceed the word limit. Instructions are given as three bullet points mostly, and you need to write three different paragraphs for these three, uh, three points. And 15 marks are for language. By language, they mean that was your, uh, by language, uh, the examiner checks checks that uh, was your uh, punctuation perfect, was your grammar on point, uh, were your sentences, uh, were, were your sentences coherent, were your, was your sentence structure right, and uh, did you actually adhere to the language uh, language criteria or not. And 15 marks are for the task fulfillment. In task fulfillment, they basically make sure that uh, the examiner demands you in under the category of task fulfillment that you must have covered all the uh, instructions that are given in the form of three bullet points in your letter, or in your uh, composition, right? And you have almost 30 minutes for this task. As you all know that paper one has a time limit of one hour and 30 minutes. So it's better that you allocate about 30 minutes to this task, right? Okay, next, how to answer a directed writing task? You need to approach this question by keeping in mind four of these things. It goes for every directed writing task purpose. You need to understand after reading the question that what is the examiner demanding you to do, right? So you need to understand the purpose that are you writing the letter to inform? Are you like writing the letter to persuade? Uh, or are you writing the letter to complain? And what is the audience? You need to understand that uh, is your audience uh, someone you know? Is your audience someone you don't know? Is your audience someone of high authority? So you need to understand because if you manage to understand your audience, only then you'll be able to understand the uh, right tone and the gist of. What is tone? Tone by tone we means, uh, by tone we mean, by tone we mean uh, the words you're going to use. 
in your letter like are you going to be polite are you going to be formal are you going to be informal and next is register so you need to understand that what exactly is the situation you are in and how are you going to write as per it right okay now let us understand the different types of letters right so uh, we know that there are basically two different types of letters be it formal or informal right informal letters are written to someone you know someone uh, you know it, it can be written to your mother it can be written to your friend it can be written to your brother and you can be you can be very informal you can you need not to be you need not to be you know uh, watch out uh, your words or your tone you can be very easily you can easily communicate with the person whereas informal letter you need to make sure that you are very uh, you know cautious in terms of language so there are different types of formal letters uh, it can be a letter of a complaint like it can be a letter of an apology it can be a letter providing some impo important information it can be an application or it can be a letter addressing an important issue so when you will be given um, directed writing task please make sure that you do understand that what kind of formal letter they are asking you to write so it it is very very important a letter of complaint can be a letter they can ask you to write um you know a letter to an organization or a letter to a company uh you know and you need to complain them of uh, of a bad product or about their bad service right bad customer service so it comes under the category of letter of complaint and so on so uh, an important tip that like whenever you are given a letter writing task please make sure that you do understand that uh, are you asked to write a formal letter or an informal letter okay so now understanding a formal letter so formal letter is mostly an official or a business letter it mostly includes letter to principal editor an organization or any of the government department or uh, precisely it's any letter that is written to inform or persuade okay so here are some of the guidelines to write a formal letter so i as mentioned before you need to understand the purpose you need to check out your tone you please uh, please make sure to avoid uh, you know avoid using jargons and slangs please don't use any informal words do not use contractions okay so what are contractions contractions by contractions i mean uh, do not write do uh, do not write do not as don't do not use words like can't please don't use it because um, informal uh, you know when we are writing something formal we make sure that we do not use contractions okay so please make sure that you write according to the audience and situation and if the question asks you to begin with dear xyz or dear editor do not write addresses or date in the format just write dear editor dear xyz and start with the letter and always plan before starting do not approach the question hurriedly read the question very properly at least two times so you do understand um the purpose the tone everything related to the uh, related to the question um and finally pay attention to grammar and punctuation as there are 15 marks allocated to it okay so this is a standard structure of a formal letter uh, you need to have an appropriate greeting uh, by greeting i mean you need to start a letter by dear sir dear madam and then there's an introductory paragraph uh, by introductory paragraph you need to you know you are often supposed to inform the person that why are you writing the letter and then there is uh, the introductory paragraph is followed by three to four paragraphs in which you need to explain the points and finally there's a concluding paragraph and then there's an ending ending salutation like yours faithfully or yours sincerely okay greeting and ending so this is kind of a point that i'm sure most of the people don't know about so if you are writing to the person you know about right so you need to greet him by his name so you will uh, you will be using dear uh, dear mr uh, mr ehsan dear ms tara and in this in this case if you know the person if you know the person so uh, at the end the ending salutation will be yours sincerely and in case you do not know the person to whom you are writing address him as dear editor or dear sir and you will be using yours faithfully at the end in this case okay so now how to get started with the body with the body of the letter how are you going to write so make sure that you have a very clear topic sentence so what is a topic sentence topic sentence is the first 
sentence of your paragraph. So uh, your topic sentence should be very, very clear and it should convey the purpose of your, of your paragraph to the examiner, right? So you may discuss your first point in the paragraph. So most of the people uh, in the directed writing task, they cover the first point in their first paragraph. So there's no harm in it. Okay, so these are some of the possible opening lines that you can use in your letter, like you can start your letter by I'm writing to inform you, I request your assistance concerning the matter, I request your kind permission for, I would generally appreciate it, I intend to, so you may use any of those, any of these lines mentioned, or you may come up with a line of your own. Okay, so the body of the letter, as, I, as I've told you before, you it must include three to four paragraphs and each point should be discussed in each point should be discussed in a separate paragraph and make sure that you write the topic sentence very carefully. Okay, next is the concluding paragraph. Uh, again, you need to be very, very cautious regarding the topic sentences and the letter is coming to a closure. So make sure that before writing the concluding paragraph, uh, all of your three points are covered perfectly. So again, the topic sentences for this, it can be um, like, I hope that uh, I hope that my question will not be a source of inconvenience for you. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope my information will be helpful. So you may use any of the any of these, or you may come up with a topic sentence of your own. Okay, so how to end? Uh, please make sure to write. A line before ending it can be thank you for your cooperation um thank you for your cooperation thank you for your consideration and finally after writing this you need to end it properly by yours faithfully or yours sincerely okay so what are the high yield points that you need to keep in your mind okay you need to start and end properly again next is you need to cover all the bullet points in detail and please Look for your tone, be polite and formal, be very, very courteous. And one thing I'd like to mention more is that in the directed writing task, be very specific. Do not talk generally, be very, very specific. Okay, I'll tell you that how do you need to apply this point? Okay, so let us practice an exam question now. Um, so, so the formal letter did appear in the directed writing portion uh, in the paper of O-Levels June, in the paper of June, 2019. So let us approach it. Okay, so uh, you are advised to write 200, uh, the words between 200 and 300. Total marks for this part are 30. 15 marks are for uh, correct language usage and 15 marks are for the task fulfillment, right? Again, so the task is, again, so uh, please make sure that you do understand the task. I'll tell you that how are you supposed to approach this question? Uh, please stay tuned with me. Okay, so. The task is that you are walking along a busy road and you see a car drive very close to someone on a bicycle. The car almost knocks the cyclist off the bicycle. So who are involved in the accident? The, the car and the, and the cyclist, right? You are not the one who's involved in the accident. Next, you are very concerned about the way the car drivers behave towards cyclists, right? So the examiner has already told you that you, uh, you are very, very, uh, you are, you know, empathetic towards the cyclist. You need to make sure that you do understand that what does the examiner expect from you, right? Next is you decide to write a letter to the editor of the local newspaper to complain. So it's a letter of complaint. You are going to complain about the behavior, about the misbehavior of the car drivers towards the cyclist. And you are a witness. You are not one of the victim, you need to make sure that you do understand it because I have seen most of the students making mistake at this part that they do not understand the basic uh, task. And then when they're approaching these three points, they tend to make lots of mistakes. Okay, next is write a letter. You must include the following, when and where the incident took place. So by when they mean that at what date, uh, at what time did the incident took place? take place at what time did the incident take place again we did you need to use the first form okay when okay so please be specific uh do not write that this accident uh this accident uh took place on mon um you know on a weekday or on the weekend please mention the day and where the incident took place um when I was going through the marking scheme, uh, the examiner did complain that most of the students just mentioned that the, ex uh, that the accident took place uh, across the road or on this junction. So you need to be, uh, you need to be very, very, you know, 
cautious regarding this aspect that you need to mention the name you can say that the accident took place uh, accident you can say the accident took place at the tourist junction and you can even mention the junction you can take you can say that the accident uh, took place uh, at a bridge and you can name the bridge right so please make sure that you be you are very very specific right you can make up the details you know they're not going to cross check your details but again you need to be you need to be you know you know you need to keep this point in your mind that you are being very very specific and you are being very clear with your details right because you are reporting something na huh? okay next is what exactly happened you need to narrate the incident one of the example can be that the car driver that how the car driver was to blame so here you are not going to blame the cyclist instead you are going to be like that uh, that how was the car driver uh, on mistake how was he committing a mistake you can say that uh, maybe the car driver was over speeding or the car driver was drunk or the car driver was using a cell phone so you can you make up any of the story right next is what do you think should happen to improve the situation for cyclists on the roads so this is the portion in which you need to give your suggestions but make sure that you are not suggesting or you are not asking the editor to do something you are just generally giving suggestions you can say that there can be uh, you know there should be uh, a separate uh, road track for the cyclist or you can say that uh, strict uh, laws should come uh, and should be implemented uh, on uh, regarding you know uh, against the uh, against the phone usage uh, so basically you're going to address the cause of accident you are going to mention you're going to give solutions for that okay next is cover all these three points in detail and you should make your letter polite and informative and they have told you that what uh, should your tone be so they have told you to be polite so that means it's that means that you need to be very very courteous and you need to be an informative the informative they mean that you need to give every sort of detail you need not to miss anything you need to give every sort of detail okay so start your letter as uh, you know by dear editor so they have already told you to start your letter this way and uh, and i have to and i did tell you before that if they ask you to start your letter with dear something so you need not to write any address or any uh, date or something and remember to supply an appropriate ending by appropriate ending they mean that you need to uh, you know have a proper concluding paragraph and a proper ending line and ending salutation okay so i hope that things make sense to you now okay so thank you so much uh, i hope that you enjoyed uh, today's lecture and if you wish to know more and if you if you'd like to study more from me so please join my course to get an a star in your exam and uh, join valim for quality uh, learning experience and please don't forget to give me a feedback thank you so much